the human soul I want you to understand this that's very important the human soul the human spirit all right the inward man has an ability remember that man was made created in the image of God he is like God in other words he functions like God he looks like God he functions like God all right the Bible says that God made man in his own image and in his own likeness in other words he looks like God and he functions like God all right now if God if God wants something he doesn't need to ask his simple imagination of it creates it that's why we say your imaginative power is your creative ability Worry helps you imagine the worst case scenario. Worry helps you imagine negative possibilities. And your imagination of those negative possibilities crystallizes them. Worry helps make your fears possible so God says be anxious for nothing be worried about nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall garrison your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Refuse to be worried. Repel worry. Repel it. You say, I refuse to worry. I refuse to worry. Now, when, when worry attacks you, don't think it's going to go away just if you change your mind. Because worry is a spirit. It's not going to go away just because you say, I changed my mind. That's why the Bible tells us that. We should take unto ourselves the shield of faith. He says, with which ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And what do we have also? The sword of the Spirit, which is the rhema of God. In other words, you need to protect yourself Protect yourself with the helmet of salvation. Protect yourself with the breastplate of righteousness. Protect yourself with your loins guard about with truth. Protect yourself with your feet shod by the preparation of the gospel. That's your boots, right? Then defend yourself with your shield of faith. You see, you got to protect yourself with all of this and defend yourself with your shield of faith. Then go on the offensive with the sword of the Spirit, which is the rhema, the rhema of God, the word of God for the now that's spoken to you, that belongs to you now concerning your situation. What does God's word say now? I refuse to worry. Why? He said, in nothing be anxious. But in everything, and this is one of them, praise God. I pray and supplication with thanksgiving. I make my request known. What do I want? He says, don't worry about anything. Declare what you want. What do you want? Don't just sit there and worry and worry and worry. He says, what do you want? 
worry about nothing. Declare what you want. And then give thanks to God because it is done. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you give thanks because it is done, he says, the peace of God. That surpasses understanding. In other words, here you are. Circumstances don't look right. Everything looks like there's trouble. How can you be at peace in the midst of this trouble? He says, that peace of God that surpasses understanding. Others can't understand how you can be at rest with all of this trouble. How you can be at rest with all of this trouble coming out against you. With all these challenges. How can you be at rest? He says, yet it is possible and it is happening. Because he calls it the peace of God that surpasses understanding. It beggars understanding. It dwarfs understanding. Is that peace of God shall guard your hearts. Guard your hearts. Hallelujah. I like that. Say it again. I refuse to worry. I refuse to worry about anything. I don't worry about anything. I refuse. I refuse to worry. So when worry attacks you, if you catch yourself worrying, if you catch yourself worrying, hey! You know, you know sometimes there are people, there are people who love to be seen worrying. They feel like if they're not found worrying, they will not be taken seriously. You can't laugh around them because something serious is going on. And what is that thing that is serious? So look at this letter. And then you look at it. It's all about somebody writing them about how much they owe or um, they're forfeiting something or they're losing a job or something like that. None of those things should move you. Understand? You say, there is not a factor in my life. Hey, come on here. Are you still there? You say, that is not a factor in my life. It's not a factor in my prosperity. It's not a factor in my joy. It's not a factor in my fulfillment in life. It's not a factor. Glory to God. It's not a factor. Amen. Is it a factor? No, no it's not. No, it's not. Jesus said, only one thing is needful. <laughs> one thing. He didn't say there are some things that are needful. He said only one thing. And we know what it is. It was what the Bible tells us Mary was listening to. The Word. That's the only thing that's needful. Because with the Word, you can make anything. When God had the Word empty and in darkness, what did He do? The whole world was a chaotic mass. What did God do? He didn't fix anything. He didn't do anything with His hands. He just said, let there be light. He spoke. And that Word that He spoke resides in you now. You see that? It's there in you. Words are powerful, but the Word is all powerful. I, I'm not sure you got that. You heard it, but whether or not you got it is something else. I'm going to say it again. I said, words are powerful. But the Word is all-powerful. Can we take it again? I know it's short enough for you to memorize. I wanted to get into your spirit so you understand what I'm saying. I said, words are powerful, but the Word is all-powerful. 
All right. That is to say, anybody can say anything and have it produce results. Whether or not he's a Christian. Anybody. After all, man was made in the image of God and in his likeness. That's the natural man. He can see anything and have it affect his life or affect anybody else. So words are powerful. But when a man is born again, he is born of the Word. The Bible says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the Word of God that liveth and abideth forever. So when a man is born again, he is born of the Word. He is the offspring of the Word. He is called to live by the Word. He is being built by the Word. He dwells in the Word. Are you hearing me? Now God says, hey, let what has brought you into being come out of your mouth. So what? When we say you speak words, you don't just speak words, you speak the Word. Ah, ah, ah. Ah? Ah? No, 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 no. Longs ke jebra haro longos ki Ah? Seja prakto? In the realm of the spirit, the word is all that's necessary. And yet the spirit governs the word. The spirit governs all things. The spirit, the spirit, the spirit and the realm thereof has the laws that control the universe. Receive the word at my mouth, saith the Lord. Receive the word. Have it in your spirit. For there is the home of the word. Right in your spirit. For listening to me, saith the Lord, is actually thinking the thoughts of God and walking in this realm of life. And therefore, saith the Spirit of God, when you speak, it comes forth. It comes forth. Oh, glory to God. Somebody say hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. We are born into that realm. We belong there. Fashioned by the Word. Created by the Word. You understand? Shepherded by the Word. And then as we grow in the Word, all that comes into our thinking is in that direction, in that imagination. You see that? And then we find that we are manifesting the Word. When we speak, is the Word speaking. Look at Jesus. That's what He was. He was the Word of God made flesh. He was the Word working in the streets. Hallelujah. Everything He said was the outbreathings of God. Marvelous, marvelous. Everything he said. When he said, bring that fish, the word was said. The, do you understand what I'm talking about? When he asked a question, it was the word, God Almighty asking. Think about it. Think about it. When we are in sync with God and breathing out his thoughts, that's why he said, it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, thou pour my spirit upon all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. In other words, they will speak my words. In other words, you see, every time they prophesy, they are in sync with the Spirit, saying what the Spirit is saying at that moment. And that means having the power of the Spirit manifested in the Word. So when they speak by the Spirit, 
It's as though God has spoken. It will produce the same results. Are you still there? So when you face a situation, what do you do? Are you listening? In the Old Testament, back in the Old Testament, when they, when they faced a predicament, or they found themselves in a precarious situation, they looked out for the prophet of God. And they said, prophet of God, please help. What do we do? And then the prophet spoke. When the prophet said, go, they went knowing that they had it made. Because the prophet brought to them what thus saith the Lord. God's word. Now, the prophet brought it. Now, Moses said, I would to God that all of God's people were prophets. <laughs> He was prophesying God's thoughts. Hallelujah. Well, he said, when the Spirit comes, that will be possible. And the Spirit came and has made that possible. So, when do you prophesy? Somebody said, when the prophecy is given. What is prophecy? So, crash those of Ramla High. He says, come up and think like me. That's what God's saying at the, uh, this hour. Come up and think like me. Oh, glory to God. I like that. God says, come up and think like me. I like that. That's what I said in other tongues. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God forevermore. Now, now think about it. God. Huh. Hello. God is speaking every time. The human body. Is a limitation of divinity. Can I explain that very simply? Jesus was God. Jesus is God. When Jesus was tabernacled in human flesh, there were things he could not do because he was in the human body. For example, he couldn't continue every day, every hour without getting tired. He had to sleep. One time he was in the boat and fell asleep. Because he was tired. And another occasion there was on a journey. And uh, when they got to the well, Jesus said, hey you guys, go on, I am tired. And he sat down, and the disciples went on, and they, tried to, they went out to get food for him. The Bible says he was wearied with his journey. He was tired. It was a long journey. Because he was encased in a physical body, a human body. That body had not been glorified. He couldn't be in two places at the same time because it was a human body. How Jesus wanted to be free of that body through the Holy Ghost. Because that's what he got for us. Letting the Spirit loose. In us. He couldn't even minister beyond Israel. As much as he loved the whole world. He couldn't. He was limited. Because he was a Jew. Even the Samaritan woman wouldn't want to listen to him. And said, how can you ask me for water? You're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan. How can you? We have no dealings with each other. That was a Samaritan. What would have happened to the Romans? They wouldn't have accepted him. The limitation of the human body is the limitation of divinity in you. 
for example. I said, Jesus was the Word. That's what the Bible says. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus. But then when He was sleeping, was the Word sleeping? The only reason I had to go to sleep was what? Because the body was tired. The body needed rest. So what does that mean? That the essence of the human spirit is not the physical body. Hey, come on here. The essence of the human spirit, the human personality, is not the physical body. The body can be limited. There are things you can't do because of your physical body. But words, words, God designed divinity to be revealed and released through words. Words are unlimited. Words cannot be limited. Because words go into the realm of the Spirit. You can speak from here and have something happen in Russia. <laughs> That's the power of words. You can speak from here and have something happen in heaven. You can speak from here and have something happen in America. You can speak from here and have something happen in Congo. You can speak from here, glory to God, and have something happen all over the world. Can you shout hallelujah? Words. Man, oh my. How important your words are. And when your spirit is in sync with the Holy Ghost, it becomes the Word. That's the Word. So when you have a situation to deal with, you got something to change. Stay your spirit. Hallelujah. Stay your spirit. Never be intimidated by anything. Never be intimidated by anything. Train yourself to think God's thoughts. Because if you think God's thoughts, the necessary result is you will speak God's words. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Hallelujah. So, if the abundance of your heart, the abundance of your meditation is the word, definitely when you open your mouth. You see, because the, the thoughts of God will be, will be waiting for expression. They'll be right there when you open your mouth. It'll be the word coming out. And so you always win. I can't talk fear. You see that? Because I don't have fear in my spirit. I can't talk fear. I can't talk negatively. Because it's not in my spirit. I got the word in my spirit. Hallelujah. That's what you've got to do. That's what you've got to do. Meditate on the Word, soak your spirit in the Word until only the Word comes out of your mouth. And so you find the Word making your Word. So you have a beautiful Word that you live in. So when the darkness is there. It will only be because you're not there. Because when you show up, the light shows up. So you become what God planned for you all the time. The answer to human problems. You are the answer. Come on, come on. Are you getting it? You are not the fellow looking for answers. You see, in many places, including many churches, you got a lot of people, they're looking for answers. Oh God, you know, they're looking for answers. But the truth is, that's not, they're, they're in the wrong position. And they need somebody to teach them this stuff, so they can change their position. They're in the wrong position. They're looking for answers. What I'm going through, through, through what? You're going through what? You see, what I'm going through has been for so long. You know, they got all of these complaints. When are you going to stop? So when, when I just pray that God will answer my... Answer what? Solve what? 
The Bible says, casting all your cares upon him. They haven't done that. They haven't done that. He says, casting all your cares upon him. Everything you care about. Everything you care about. He says, cast, cast, cast. Throw them on him. Say, Father, I don't worry no more. How, how does it happen? Just by you, right there where you're sitting. And if you have worries, or if you have cares, you just say, at that moment, now, oh, you make up your mind. Uh, from now, no more worrying. <laughs> cast them on him. The Bible says, casting all your cares upon him, for he, he careth for you. Some of you are worried about your children, care about your children. Listen! If you, as evil as you are, if you, as wicked as you are, if you, this you, if you can care about your children, you, you, as you are, no, think about it. If you can care about your children, this you. Don't you know you? If nobody knows you, you know yourself. <laughs> if you can care about how they're going to grow up, you care about how they're going to be protected when they're out, you care about how they'll feed, you care about their shelter, about their clothing, about everything concerning them. You don't care about their friends. You care about so many things about them. If you, you, you can care, how much more shall your heavenly Father? And he's the one inviting you, casting all your cares. He says, give me your cares. <laughs> casting all your cares upon him for... He didn't say casting all your cares upon him because you don't... You, you are not... You, you, are, you, are, you, are bad, you are a bad guy. No. He says, casting all your cares. Not because you don't know how to care well. He says, casting all your cares upon him because he cares. He says, give me your cares. I'll take them. I'll take them. I'll fix them. But we can't be caring at the same time over the same thing. If you are going to be caring, God can't come in because your worries will stop the power of God from flowing your way. Refuse to care and confess the word. Father, I've given it up to you. You are in charge and you care. And the answers belong to me. Thank you, Lord. Solution is mine. The answer is mine. Because you care. Hallelujah. Because you care. Glory to God. Because you care. You have your son or your daughter away somewhere, and you know, oh God, don't know what's I'm oh God. Mm -mm. Father, thank you because you care. Glory to God. He's protected because you care. Hallelujah. She's protected because you care. Glory to God because you care. Hallelujah. Confess that God cares. That's what the word says. So voice the word. Is the word that is voice that works. Oh, did you hear what I just said? The Bible says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if you don't say it, it will not work, even though you think it. You see that? If you think it, God accepts you. He says, by your thinking, by your believing, you go right with God. But you will not get the answer until you say you're believing. Can you see that? Glory to God. I'm a wonder. I'm a wonder. Say it again. I'm a wonder. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says, as the wind blows it where it leaves, that you can't tell where it's coming from, where it's going. It says, so is everyone that's born of the Spirit. The natural man can't understand him. Everything he does, whatsoever he doeth, shall prosper. 
whatsoever he doeth. What, whatsoever. That's why anything I get involved in has to prosper because whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That's me. Whatsoever he doeth. That's me. Whatsoever. Hey, 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 glory to God. Whatso, whatsoever. Whatsoever he doeth. If I get involved, it'll work. Because I'm a blessed man. Come on, brother. I'm a blessed man. Let me hear you, sister. I'm a blessed woman. Say it. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. You remember? In the seed of Abraham. Mine, oh mine. I'm blessed. Mm. I'm blessed. And my spirit is stared, you see. My spirit is stared. I'm blessed. I only think blessed. 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 I refuse to fear. I refuse to worry. Bless, bless, bless. Oh, the God, bless. Thank you, Lord, bless. You, you say this. I, I'm so blessed. I got good things coming from everywhere. I'm so blessed. I got favor coming from everywhere. I'm so blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Now, you see, we're in the house of God, right? Okay. At this time, you know what you're going to do? You're going to use what you have. You don't worry anymore. You say what you want. Did you hear that? And no matter what you do, um, what are you, uh, you're a businessman or you're uh, um, uh, a professional or wh wherever you work. You bring that blessing into your work. All right? You bring that favor into your work, into what you do. You are that man or that woman with an excellent spirit. You're going to function with an excellent spirit. Now say this with me. I have an excellent spirit. Because I'm the seed of Abraham. I am the blessed. You know, they used to call Abraham, Abraham the blessed. Abraham the blessed. Even up to now, even up to now, the, the, the lots of people, especially in Arab countries where they, they claim um, uh, physical ties with Abraham, all right, they still recognize Abraham the blessed. They say he's the blessed. And yet the Bible says, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And that has happened. Praise God. Hallelujah! Glory to God! Woo! It has already happened. It has already happened. So the blessing of Abraham has come on me. Woo! Glory to God! So, so... Now, I am the blessed. Like they called him the blessed, Abraham the blessed. I am the blessed. You see that? You are so blessed. Do you recognize it now? All right. So, you're going to speak as the blessed one. About anything you do. 
about anything you're involved with. Because you are the blessed. There's excellence in your life. Amen. I said there's excellence in your life. Now pull it out. Bring it out. Come on brother, come on sister. Use your mouth now. Speak words. Hallelujah. You worry not that the money is available. You worry that the money may not be available when you need it. Or you worry that it may not come. Or you worry that it is not there. And so they may be sent out of school. Which means worry has its fears. All right? Worry has its fears of its negative possibilities. We may be sent out of the house. We may lose the job. You don't worry that money is coming. You worry that it may not come. You worry that the pain you have may be more complicated than you realize. What if, it's, what if this is an incurable problem? What if, what if? So worry has its fears of negative uh, possibilities. And that's what God wants to stop us from. Because worry sets up a magnetic force that attracts those negative possibilities to us and makes them possible. The human soul, I want you to understand this, that's very important. The human soul, the human spirit, all right, the inward man, has an ability. Remember that man was made, created in the image of God. He is like God. In other words, he functions like God. He looks like God. He functions like God. All right? The Bible says that God made man in his own image and in his own likeness. In other words, he looks like God and he functions like God. All right? Now, if God, if God wants something, He doesn't need to ask. His simple imagination of it creates it. That's why we say your imaginative power is your creative ability. Worry helps you imagine the worst case scenario. Worry helps you imagine negative possibilities. And your imagination of those negative possibilities crystallizes them. Worry helps Make your fears possible. So God says, be anxious for nothing. Be worried about nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall garrison your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Refuse to be worried. Repel worry. Repel it. You say, I refuse to worry. I refuse to worry. Now, when when worry attacks you, don't think it's going to go away just if you change your mind. Because worry is a spirit. 
It's not going to go away just because you say, I changed my mind. That's why the Bible tells us that we should take unto our heirs the shield of faith. He says, with which ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And what do we have also? The sword of the Spirit. Which is the rhema of God. In other words, you need to protect yourself. Protect yourself with the helmet of salvation. Protect yourself with the breastplate of righteousness. Protect yourself with your loins got about with truth. Protect yourself with your feet shod by the preparation of the gospel. That's your boots, all right? Then defend yourself with your shield of faith. You see, you got to protect yourself with all of this and defend yourself with your shield of faith. Then go on the offensive with the sword of the Spirit, which is the rhema, the rhema of God. The word of God for the now that's spoken to you, that belongs to you now concerning your situation. What does God's word say now? I refuse to worry. Why? He said, in nothing be anxious, but in everything, and this is one of them, praise God. I pray and supplication with thanksgiving, I make my request known. What do I want? He said, don't worry about anything. Declare what you want. What do you want? Don't just sit there and worry and worry and worry. He says, what do you want? Worry about nothing. Declare what you want. And then give thanks to God because it is done. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you give thanks because it is done, he says, the peace of God. That surpasses understanding. In other words, here you are. Circumstances don't look right. Everything looks like there's trouble. How can you be at peace in the midst of this trouble? He says, that peace of God that surpasses understanding. Others can... Oh, glory to God. Somebody say hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. We are born into that realm. We belong there. Fashioned by the Word. Created by the Word. You understand? Shepherded by the Word. And then as we grow in the Word, all that comes into our thinking is in that direction, in that imagination. You see that? And then we find that we are manifesting the word. When we speak, is the word speaking. Look at Jesus. That's what he was. He was the word of God made flesh. He was the word working in the streets. Hallelujah. Everything he said was the outbreathings of God. Marvelous, marvelous. Everything he said. When he said, bring that fish, the word was saying. The, do you understand what I'm talking about? When he asked a question, it was the word, God Almighty asking. Think about it. Think about it. When we are in sync with God and breathing out his thoughts, that's why he said, it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, thou pour out my spirit upon all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. In other words, they will speak my words. In other words, you see, every time they prophesy, they are in sync with the Spirit, saying what the Spirit is saying at that moment. And that means having the power of the Spirit manifested in the Word. So when they speak by the Spirit, it's as though God has spoken. It will produce the same results. Are you still there? 
So when you face a situation, what do you do? Are you listening? In the Old Testament, back in the Old Testament, when they, when they faced a predicament, or they found themselves in a precarious situation, they looked out for the prophet of God. And they said, prophet of God, please help. What do we do? Oh, oh, oh. 